fresh air, peace and quiet, nobody around for miles, no cell service, and just a beautiful camp spot that I found here this afternoon. In this video, I am on a solo multi-day trip and I thought what I would do is pull out all my gear so you can see what I carry with me when I'm all by myself to give you some ideas of some things you might want to take with you when you're on a trip. Oh, I'm so glad to be out here. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and today I am at an awesome campsite that I just found by chance. I'm outside of Montrose, Colorado, and I'm just out here doing a little bit of exploring, a little bit of reconnaissance for an upcoming trip that we have. I spent the last couple days in Moab, and now I've got some free time to go do some exploring and some camping, and so I knew I was gonna have this opportunity, so I packed all my gear that I would need to go out by myself. And so what I thought was, it'd be kind of fun just to pull everything out, show you what I carry, why I carry it, and then, uh, and then I'll give you some ideas about maybe some gear you wanna take with you. Now, you will notice that I took the rack off the Gladiator. There's no rooftop tent. So things have changed a little bit and I'll be talking more about the Gladiator and the plans for it here in the future. But you know what, for this trip, I packed everything in here I needed and my sleeping uh, situation is a little bit different. I'll show you that when we pull it out. All right, let me pull the tonneau cover off and just start pulling gear out and we'll talk about it. You know, I'm really glad that I did not get rid of this tonneau cover after I did all that work to the Gladiator. It's been really nice to have on this trip. I mean, we've had some rain, things got a little muddy today. And so just to be able to keep all the gear secure and clean has been really nice. And I did put quite a bit of stuff back here. Okay, while we're recording, you may hear some click, 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 click sounds in the background. There are these noisy grasshoppers that are making all kinds of racket around here. I've never heard anything like it. So if you hear that noise, that's what that is. Okay, let's start off with fuel. So I brought a three gallon Rotopax can and it's just strapped back here against the side of the truck bed. And I don't expect to need fuel for this trip. Uh, this trail is only 40 miles long and some of the other trails I'm exploring are even shorter. But what I have noticed in the past is when you're out exploring these backcountry roads, sometimes the little stores in between places are just a mom and pop place that have a single gas pump. And sometimes you'll get there and they'll be like, nah, we're out of fuel. So it's a good idea when you're out here doing this kind of stuff to bring a little fuel with you just in case. Okay, I did bring uh, my ARB air compressor and that way I can air up if I need to. Now for this trail, I didn't air down. Uh, it's been a little muddy, a little rocky, but nothing that I needed to air down for. But having the ability to do that in case I get you know, into some thick mud, even some snow, um, I can air down and air back up. So this ARB compressor is really good. Now, you may remember that when I had the cage up here, I actually had an air compressor installed on there and now that's gone and so this is my only alternative. Uh, so I have that and, and I threw this bag in there just out of habit. This actually has air hose, um, my air down little deflators and a, a, a little meter on there. Uh, and it was just out of habit for throwing that in there. I actually have everything I need inside this kit. So lesson learned for me, I only need to bring you know the kit and I'm good to go. Of course, I've got a good camp chair. Now, I didn't steal my wife's really comfortable camp chair for uh, this trip. I just took this one. This is a little Kelty that I've had for a long time. I love this chair. It's so simple to set up. And you know what? Some people say, oh, that chair's too small. But I like it because it's compact. It doesn't take up a lot of space. And it's just perfect for me. Um, and you know what? If you're interested in this chair, I will leave a link down below. You can go check it out. It's in my Amazon store. It's a really good, durable chair. I've had this, and I'll bet I have had this chair for about four years. And I have never broken one of these poles. The fabric has stayed completely intact that entire time. And you can see there, it sets up super fast. I love this chair and you gotta have a good chair at camp. All right, next is a product that I've used for a long time and I've talked about this a few times on the channel. 
and this is the water port uh, and this is a pressurized water system so this has got this little valve here and you can pressurize the whole system and then there's a sprayer hose here that you just hook up and you can have you know you can take a shower you can wash your dishes you can wash your hands it's very handy to have uh, now I brought plenty of drinking water I don't typically use this for drinking water you can I always make sure it's good clean water that goes in there uh, but what also what I like is that it's black and so if I leave it out here in the sun the water warms up it's been kind of nice now I will say uh, over the years that I've had this I did have to replace this valve because it wouldn't pressurize in there the seal on there just broke and it wouldn't work anymore uh, so that's the only downfall of this thing it is a little bulky it only is 3.8 gallons of water but I do like it all right, when you're out by yourself, there's a couple things that are very important. Obviously, it's always best, and it's actually more fun when you go with family or friends, somebody that's in a, another vehicle. But when you are going to be out solo by yourself, it's important to make sure that you've got some tools and you've got some recovery gear. But most importantly, when you're out here in remote areas and you don't have any cell service, make sure that somebody knows where you're at. Both Marco and my wife know exactly where I am today. So if something went wrong, they didn't hear from me by tomorrow, they'll know at least where to start looking. So I have my toolkit back here and I have talked about this tool bag in depth and I will leave a link down below if you want to go check out that video. Uh, and this thing is, I don't know, it's been used and abused. I mean, you can see it just gets thrown around everywhere. I put this from vehicle to vehicle and I love it because uh, everything is segmented into little pockets and I know what's in there all the time. This is a great toolkit. I actually am planning on building another one just so I don't have to keep moving this from vehicle to vehicle. I'll have one at least in the chair chief full-time so it's a great toolkit and then for recovery gear I'm definitely a little overkill but you know what I don't think you can really go overkill when you're by yourself so I've got a really good shovel this is by crazy beaver I like this shovel because when you are in hard ground boy this thing will dig in pretty good but you can do a foldable shovel I've just found that the foldable shovels the metal on them is a little thin and it's a little flimsy so this takes up a little more space uh, but it is a good good shovel and then for recovery gear, you know, I, I recently upgraded uh, my recovery gear to this Factor 55 bag. And what I really like about this bag is it's this nice heavy duty canvas. And it's got everything in here that I could possibly want to recover myself or to recover somebody else. Obviously you need to have a winch on your vehicle, but having some good, reliable, dependable recovery gear is important. The stuff that I had before, uh, I had a toe strap that was several years old, starting to fray. I was starting to worry about if it was gonna hold up. And so this kit is perfect. Got some soft shackles in here. I've got a rear hook for recovering from the rear if you need to pull somebody or pull me out. Gloves, tree strap. And then I did throw the kinetic rope back here. And it's nice to have these because uh, you can stretch with these. So if you need to pull somebody out of the mud, this is perfect. You do not want to do that with the toe strap. The toe strap is really more for towing somebody. Maybe you're broken or whatnot. But if you need to yank somebody out of the sand or yank them out of the mud, this is the right tool for that job. Now, an interesting question that I get asked all the time is, Brad, how do you go to the bathroom when you're out here? Well, the truth is, uh, usually you just go find a bush and take care of your business when it's number one. When it's number two, well, it depends on where you're at and what your capabilities are. That shovel works pretty good for digging a nice deep hole. Just make sure that you are at least 100 yards away from camp and you are nowhere near a water source. But there are some places that will require you to carry a portable toilet. And I bring this with me just in case, uh, but also, you know, my wife, she prefers to use the portable toilet. So there you go. I know this is a strange topic. People don't like to talk about this, but this is a nice toilet. It's got three little legs on it, opens up. And then I always bring these they're double duty bags, but you can get variants of these. Uh, they basically have a double Ziploc in there and there's like this gel stuff that just kind of soaks everything up and keeps things somewhat nice and clean. So there you go. That's what I have. So there are some ominous clouds moving in and I know that it is near monsoon season and there was a 30% chance of rain. So Fingers crossed I don't get terribly soaked today. All right, before I show you what's in this big bag right here, which if you follow me on Instagram, some of you might already have an idea of what's in there. Let me talk about what's in this big old box. And so I've had these big cases here for a while. I actually have a handful of these. And this is from Rome Adventure Company. These are great durable boxes. They're kind of big and bulky, but they 
really do a good job of keeping your gear secure, dry. So in here, I have the heart of my camping gear. And so let me break all this out. I'll just show you really quick. I actually had to empty out the Patriot Campers trailer and throw everything in here and kind of do a little check just to make sure I wasn't forgetting anything. Now, out of all the gear that I carry, what's the most important thing? Coffee, of course it's coffee. Got my little percolator, got way too much coffee just so I don't run out and you gotta have a good coffee cup. Uh, I will be brewing some up in the morning, I can't wait. There's nothing better than camp coffee. Okay, what else do I have in this box? Well, you gotta be able to clean stuff up. So I do have a sponge. I've got this little bucket right here, which collapses, which makes it really nice if you're gonna wash dishes, cause you just put a little bit of soap and water in there and that way you're not wasting a ton of water. And I do have biodegradable soap. I know there was one video a while back where I accidentally didn't have my biodegradable soap and you guys busted my chops. Normally I almost always carry this with me. Um, I always have paper towels. And then uh, my cooking setup is just a simple uh, Coleman stove. And yes, I do cook. I know Marco's not out here with me. I make some pretty good meals, although I'm going pretty budget this time. Uh, then I've got these GSI cooking gear pieces. This is pots and pans uh, in here. There's some collapsible bowls, which I like because they're just, they stay nice and flat inside. And what I really like is the last time we were on our trip, uh, I made spaghetti at camp and uh, these lids have a little strainer on them. And I actually had never done like a full on noodle thing to use this. It actually worked really well. So I was very impressed with it. There's a frying pan in here. There's a little handle for everything. Plus the case you can use as a bucket. And then in here is also a GSI utensil kit. So I've got tongs and cheese grater and a knife and plenty of forks and spoons and all that kind of stuff. So uh, that's what I use. I don't bring disposable stuff. I like to wash stuff and that way I'm not generating extra trash. Uh, obviously I've got a couple uh, propane tanks. I do have a mosquito net and so this just goes over your head. You can wear a hat and put it over there uh, and it's treated with uh, insect repellent, which is nice. I thought I might need this out here, but so far not a single mosquito, fingers crossed. Uh, I've got a headlamp and then I have this lantern, which is an LED lantern. I love this thing. Uh, it's got a really powerful battery in there. I mean, I can run days and days and days without charging off of this. Plus it's got a little USB port so I can charge my phone off of there. Uh, a lighter, trash bags, pet out your trash guys. Don't leave stuff behind. Uh, Ziploc bags, a couple washcloths, and I do have a poncho. Hopefully I don't need this. I do have a full on rain jacket in the truck. And then I have a new to me uh, sleeping bag. And so this is a, a big Agnes down sleeping bag. Uh, I have been using synthetic sleeping bags for years and years. Uh, they're a little cheaper, but they are bulkier. I just didn't know if I wanted to spend the money for a down sleeping bag, and I'm so glad I did. Uh, they are so much more comfortable, so much lighter, but really, really warm. This is a 15 degree bag, uh, and it is more than enough to keep me warm at night. And one thing to mention about when you see sleeping bags that have a degree marking on it, that doesn't mean you will be comfortable at 15 degrees. It just means you won't die at 15 degrees. So it's always a good idea to get a sleeping bag that's rated for warmer than you will need it. It's only probably going to be 40 or 50 degrees out tonight. So this will be plenty for me. So there you have it. There is what's in the box. Uh, let me show you what's in that big black bag. All right, so what's been the big old duffel bag? Well, I mentioned that I took off the rack and I took off the rooftop tent. And uh, what am I gonna sleep in tonight? Well, I've got plenty of ground tents and I've slept in ground tents for many, many years. It's not a big deal. I don't need to have a rooftop tent. I just prefer it. It's more comfortable. You're up off the ground. It's very nice. But is there another option besides a ground tent? Well, the Australians have been doing it for years. And then what's in here is what's called a swag. And so basically what this is, is a small one man tent that has a mattress inside. And I actually just got this recently. I set it up in my backyard just to test it out. But tonight will be the first time I've actually slept in it. So let's go set this up really quick. And then uh, after that, I will show you what is in the truck uh, itself, all the gear inside, because there's still some pretty good important gear that you may be interested in. And then, uh, and then I'm gonna cook a little dinner and go to bed and I will wake up in the morning and report back to you on how well or how comfortable this little swag was. It'll be interesting to see. It might be a little claustrophobic, but hopefully not. Okay, the cool thing about the swag is it just comes in this roll where you undo these straps and then you roll it out just like that. How nice is that? And then there are three poles that we have to set up 
and then we'll tie it down and then uh, you'll see what she looks like uh, fully set up. It's not a big tent, but there is a nice two inch comfortable mattress in there, which should be nice. And there we go, set up. I'm sure it'll get faster the more I do it, but uh, pretty small, compact. It's got good ventilation. There's a window in the front, window in the rear, and you can open air, you know, a nice mosquito netting. So we'll check back in the morning and see how it goes. All right, let's, uh, let's show you what's in the truck. I'm still worried about this rain. I think I keep feeling a little sprinkle here and there. Okay, now at first glance, this may look like a mess, but it's actually an organized mess. This is actually how I typically pack the back of my Jeep depending on which one I'm taking. And look, most of this stuff that's inside here is not stuff that normal people would take because I'm filming and doing a lot of crazy stuff and so I've actually got a lot of extra things back here that you don't actually need. So up in the front passenger seat is my big camera bag. And so that's got my cameras, my lenses, GoPros, microphones, everything I need. And I like to have that just an easy reach. So that's usually, if, I not, if there's no passenger up there, that's usually up front. Uh, I've got this little box here, which has uh, some lavalier mics because I was doing some interviews recently. And then right here is my big gimbal, which is for filming. So you get that nice buttery smooth stuff. I'm not gonna open it up. I did a whole video on camera gear a while back. Uh, then right here is just a big old tote bag full of clothes and toiletries. And then I do have, I keep my dirty clothes in a uh, trash bag separate. And then here's the, uh, here's the topic that I get asked all the time. But, you know, we just don't talk about so much on YouTube uh, because YouTube frowns upon conversations about what's inside this box. But you can see right there and get a pretty good idea what's in there. I am in bear country, so I will have this close at hand tonight. Uh, I have my laptop in here. Again, you don't normally need a laptop with you, but I'm downloading video and making sure I'm backing up everything. So I've got to have all that gear. And then down here I have my Goal Zero, which I've recently switched over to lithium. And then I have a 50 watt solar panel. So if I need to power this up, I can. Probably won't need the solar panel just because I'm going from place to place. And I can actually charge this while I'm driving. But the Goal Zero is really nice to have because you can run a ton of stuff out there. Uh, flip flops, super essential flip flops. And then on the back passenger side, I have an ice chest. So no fridge this trip. I'm just running an ice chest. And I've got a blanket, a pillow, and then just some warm clothes and a rain jacket, which I don't know, I think we're okay. I think we might be in the clear, but we'll see. Uh, so there you go. Uh, and obviously all my rather random gear, fire extinguisher, first aid kit, all that stuff is back here. Oh, I didn't mention is I do have my Garmin inReach. Um, and that is so if there's anything that goes wrong, I can hit that SOS button or I can text my wife and let her know that one, I'm okay or two, things aren't going well. So uh, I always do take that with me. So I guess technically I'm not completely off the grid, uh, but I do like having that. And my wife appreciates it when I have that because then she knows she can track me and get in touch with me if she needs to. All right, now I made a big old mess laying all this stuff out. Let me pack everything back up. Uh, I'm gonna cook a little dinner and then I'm gonna hit the hay and I will see you guys in the morning and report back on how well that swag was. Well, I was afraid that the rain was gonna start finally coming and there it is. Uh, this isn't terrible. It's raining hard enough that I definitely wanted to come inside. I do have rain gear so I can be outside if I need to, uh, but I have the Garmin inReach which has weather service and thankfully I was able to pull that up and it says that it's, this should only last about an hour so this should come and go. So I'm just hanging out here enjoying the sounds of the rain. So the rain's finally subsided but there off in the distance is some serious thunderstorms going on but nothing over here. I think we're gonna be okay. Might get a little wet tonight uh, but we should be fine. I'll just make sure all the gear's put away. Now for dinner, nothing special. No. Uh, no Marco big menus here. Uh, we're just cooking some bratwurst. Keeping it simple, especially since the rain might come back. Well, the rain jacket had to come out. It just keeps coming and going and coming and going, but that's all right, I'm not worried about it. I'm not a fair weather camper. I don't care, snow, rain, it's fine with me. And look, I know it's not the healthiest dinner, but if my wife is watching, I did have a bowl of strawberries earlier, so I am eating healthy. And this is a wheat bun, so that counts, right? Gosh, it's beautiful. 
You know, it's been a while since I've solo camped and uh, I gotta say I enjoy it more with family or friends, but it has been nice just kind of coming out here and clearing my head a little bit. I mean, it is so quiet out here, except for the rain and the thunder. It's been really nice. Now I know this is a video about uh, camping gear, um, but I just wanted to take a minute and mention, you know, I was walking around the campsite like I normally do when we pull into a place like this, and I haven't found a single bit of trash. And that's rare these days. Usually when we pull into a campsite, you know, usually we're picking up stuff. And I, and I just want to throw this out there. I, you know, I probably don't talk about it as enough uh, as I need to, and I'm going to definitely start doing it more. Look, if you are out camping and you roll into a campsite and you see some trash, pick it up. I know it's not your trash, but our job is to leave it better than we found it so we can continue to come back to these beautiful places. So guys, please help me out with that. Bring a trash bag with you, clean up your mess, and sometimes you gotta clean up everybody else's. And that's just so we can continue to enjoy this. All right, uh, there are campfire restrictions, so there's no campfire tonight. So I think, uh, I think once the sun goes down, I'll be going to bed early and uh, hopping in that new tent and we'll see how it goes. I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning. It was a very, very wet night. I don't know if you can tell, but everything is soaked. It rained for at least two thirds of the night and uh, a whole lot of wind came through. And I'll tell you what, it was dry, it was warm, and I slept really good. What a beautiful morning. Let me get some coffee. I'll tell you more about how I slept in this tent. I'll tell you, uh, there are bears here. I heard one off in the distance this morning. I don't think he'll come mess with me, but uh, but they're out here. Uh, look, sleeping in a swag. You know, using a swag has been something that I've wanted to do for a while. You know, the great thing about a swag is it's only in 35 pounds versus a rooftop tent, which is like 150 pounds. There's some pros and cons, I think, to the swag, and I think one of the pros was that mattress was really comfortable. I mean, I slept great last night. The last couple rooftop tents I've had, the mattresses have been really firm. I, I don't know what the deal is, guys. If you're making a rooftop tent, put a soft mattress in there. Even my wife complains when we get in there. That thing was very comfortable. I like that it has a window on the head and the feet because it got a nice cross breeze going through there. No condensation inside. For as much rain as we got last night, I was totally dry. And when that wind came through, I didn't even notice it. Now, let's talk about the size because that's the biggest con for me. It's small. If you're claustrophobic, this tent is definitely not for you. There are some larger swags out there. I've looked, I tried to order one from Australia, they just couldn't get it here. Uh, this one I ordered and it was actually on back order and it took a little bit to get here just before this trip. But it was the largest one I could find and you, you know, I can't sit up in there, there's no lot of room. If I wanted to change my clothes in there, it's a tight fit. So I think a larger swag has potential, but look, just throwing it up here, crawling in there, going to bed just like I did. It worked well and I slept good. So I got no complaints, just a couple criticisms. Okay, hey look, uh, we have done some great things over at E3 Overland. I just uploaded a whole course on first aid. Plus we've got a ton of other Overland courses over there. We've got some great discounts on some merchandise and some products. And we've got a magazine and some cool events coming up. If you're not a premium E3 Overland member, I'm going to leave a link down below. Go check it out. I think you'd really enjoy it. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one.